Karis insists that the best way, actually for some the only way to enjoy ribs, is after they've spent the day in a smokehouse. But what if you don't have a backyard smokehouse? What if you don't have a backyard at all? Well, here's everything you need to indulge your fall off the bone cravings. And speaking of off the bone, these are baby back ribs and on their backside is a membrane. This membrane is indigestible and it also causes the ribs to cup, to curl as they cook. So it's a good idea to pull it off and here's how. Start at the narrow end and feel for the first bone and then using the spoon as, a, as an anchor, grasp the membrane and just start pulling. It comes off really easily. The trick is just to get it started. Start at the narrow end. Use the spoon to help you get a good grip. Two racks of baby back ribs almost ready for the oven. Ribs, all ribs, whether they're beef ribs or pork ribs are flat out tough. These muscles work hard all day long. So the best way to cook them is slowly. So they tenderize. I mean, you can take ribs and just toss them on the barbecue and they'll cook, but they'll be tough and stringy and grizzly. And that's not nice. What's nice is tender. And the best way to get to tender is slowly. You can bake ribs with a wet rub or a dry rub, and both of these can be packed full of your favorite flavors. Honey mustard, for instance, classically made with yellow mustard, but this could just as easily be Dijon, it could be grainy mustard, it could be whatever mustard you happen to have kicking around. Just start with a cup or so. And a cup of honey, which could be maple syrup, or it could be any other type of sugar. It could even be a jelly or a jam or marmalade. Just a cup. and a tablespoon of thyme. But again, this could be any herb or spice, whatever your favorite happens to be. Dry rubs are just that, they're dry. There's nothing wet here, which means they tend to be based on herbs and spices, or in this case, a blend, chili powder, one half cup. And a half cup of brown sugar to balance the spiciness. Now you can stop right there, and this would make a perfectly good dry rub but you can also jazz up the works by spotlighting some of the flavors in the chili powder, like cumin. And I love cumin, tablespoon or so. And oregano, also traditionally found within the chili powder spice blend, another tablespoon. And cinnamon, which is most definitely not in chili powder, but they sure do taste good together. When you add sauce to the ribs, it's best to keep the meat side down for maximum exposure to the flavor. On the other hand, when you add a dry rub to ribs, it's best to keep the meat side up so that the rub doesn't stick to the pan. Four hundred degrees is not a low heat. But the pans and the ribs are cold, so it's always a good idea to start high and then lower the heat. 400 degrees for 15 minutes, and then three hours at 300 degrees. Lots of time for slow, patient flavor building, and more than enough time to make a barbecue sauce, because you're not eating ribs unless your fingers are sticky. This is a classic group of flavors, and all you have to do is whisk them together. Start with one can of tomato paste. One cup of red wine vinegar. Molasses, one half cup. Worcestershire sauce, one tablespoon. Chili powder, one quarter cup. Cumin powder, a tablespoon, and oregano, another tablespoon.
that's a good sign. Nice and tender. Oh, now that's delicious. There's nothing like taking the time to do something right and then being rewarded for your patience. 